You know, I should have expected when I started doing this series of videos that things would not turn out the way I wanted them to be. And it seems like, as time goes on, I'm just coming to a point of self-destruction. Why am I subjecting myself to this? I mean, it, it's enlightening, but this week I suffered through... Uh, the film title pretty much says it all and contributes overall to my feeling towards it and that was Max Payne I suffered Max Payne while watching Max Payne now I know nothing about the video game again like what's with what's with all these all these video games and anime series and comic books being brought to real life. We don't need it. With Max Payne, I'm sure there are cutscenes that are much better than the film itself. Why do we need to see a live action version of it? Because people are just going to complain. Hardcore fans of the game are just going to complain about it. Like, Mortal Kombat was okay. I like the first Mortal Kombat. I never saw Mortal Kombat Annihilation. But when you have Doom, they had the whole first person aspect of it for that one part, which is cool. But then like the Super Mario Brothers movie, they totally destroyed that. Uh, any U-Bowl movie, he does like House of the Dead, he did Blood Rain, destroyed that. Postal, destroyed that. Why do we need to see video games in movie form? There are, I, th I forget what game it was a couple months ago or a year ago or something. They said the cutscenes added up to about 90 minutes. So, with all the cutscenes in the game, you could have had a feature length film. Which is fine with me. I don't need to see a live action version of that game. So, I know nothing about Max Payne, and I still don't know anything about Max Payne after watching this movie, except, well, I know a little bit of it. I, I know some things, but not enough to justify me having to sit through 93 minutes of this crap. So the story starts out, Max Payne is a cop, or an ex-cop, who quit, oh no, he's a clerk in the, in the, the cop station. He's a clerk, his wife and baby were murdered, and he's always on the side trying to find out more evidence for the murder of his family. And what happens is he gets a tip from this club owner. He visits the club and gets, uh, gets into it with this girl played by Olga Krylenko. I think that's her name. She brings Max back to her apartment. And then we learn this whole backstory that she was part of this organization that takes this uh, fluid that is supposed to make them, I guess, stronger. It's, it's something like the military use, something like maybe the Green Goblin would use to make the military stronger, or uh, the Incredible Hulk. She gets killed, and Max is on the scene looking, and he sees that she has a tattoo. And the tattoo is this whole organization of people who have been taking this medicine to try to get stronger or something like that. So he learns that the medicine was made by, or not the medicine, the fluid was made by the medical company that his wife worked for. And throughout the film we learn that she, I think, was tested for, this, for the, the liquid and something went wrong so she had to be killed so pretty much she was killed by the only people that Max trusted which is a huge plot twist that's never been seen before but the thing that sticks out is that we keep seeing once these people take this fluid or antidote or poison whatever you want to call it 
they see these black flying demons and I don't know if if they take the medicine, if they can see them, if they can't take it, can they see them? Because it's just really confusing. And I've asked some people if these demons and stuff ever come up in the video game. And they said they have, but it's just not explained well at all in the film why they are there. I just feel no connection to the characters. I, I, I like Mark Wahlberg to an extent in like Boogie Nights and The Departed, but here he's just it's it's an extremely bland character, and in the games again I don't know if there's a lot more in depth to the character, but it's not expressed well enough in the film to have the audience make a connection back with the character. So you're pretty much just watching this guy, he's pissed off throughout the whole film, going around killing people, doing what he has to do to get evidence, and for, you know, like a renegade cop, he's just totally against the system or anything. And this just goes on for 90 minutes, and then later, Mila Kunis' character is brought in, she's the sister of Olga Krylenko, who died, and she thought that Max killed her because Max was with her the night she died, and she found Max's license at uh, her apartment. So she goes after Max, but then they team up and fight the uh, Medicine Corporation together, but I don't know if it was supposed to be just teamwork or a love story going on. I mean, they never show... I assume Max is really dedicated to his family and finding any evidence for them, so I don't think he's trying to start a relationship with her. Just, I, I didn't feel like her character was needed at all. I mean, it's just another plot that really goes nowhere because just in the end, she just lets Max do what he needs to by himself. And throughout the whole movie where you are shown this bald guy who was a test subject, he was in, he was in the army and was given the uh, potion, antidote, poison, whatever you want to call it and they, they, they showed the, a clip where they were interviewing him and he's like, oh it makes me feel good I mean all the fear just disappears and I can focus and stuff like that but eventually he gets addicted to it and takes too much and just becomes overraged and just it looked like he started kind of a fight club and he always watched where Max went and Olga Krylenko where they went and he was just hanging on the rooftops and we learn eventually that he is the reason behind her death it seemed like a bunch of stuff was stacked on top of each other but it ultimately led, uh, led to nothing, and that's one of the gripes that I had. It wasn't, it wasn't enjoyable to watch because there was no continuous plot besides Max just getting revenge. It's just a revenge story, with some twists and turns throughout the way, but nothing like really gripping or original, where you feel like you need to keep watching it. Nothing enticing enough to a point where you say to yourself, oh, I've seen this before. It's going to keep happening. There's going to be video games that keep getting made into movies, and I know that uh, Peter Jackson and Neil Bl Blomkamp, I think his name was, uh, he directed District 9. I know they were working on the Halo movie for a while, but it, it never it got uh, shut down. Then there's been talks of a Gears of War movie, a Bioshock movie, uh, Sam Raimi's going to be directing World of Warcraft, which I have no idea how that's going to turn out. I've only seen, you know, video clips of World of Warcraft, people screwing around in the South Park episode, which is classic. So I know nothing about World of Warcraft, but Sam Raimi's taking a break from Spider-Man and Drag Me to Hell. 
which uh, I heard good things about, so I might have to check that out. Hopefully it does not suck. But to filmmakers all around the world and producers and whoever's, if you feel that you need to adapt a video game into a movie, just think about it first. It may sound like a good idea at the time, it may sound like a good idea on paper, <coughs> but ultimately when it's finished, you might think, ah, oh, what a waste of time and money. Because we could have probably come up with something a lot more original. It doesn't need to be like what it is in the video game or maybe it should be exactly what it is in the video game and that's why it never translates well I mean it's just frustrating to see things that are beloved not by me per se but by groups of people large groups of people just completely turned away from something that they had a passion for before. And I don't know why it's going to keep, it's going to keep happening regardless, but I don't know why it keeps happening. I feel like there's tons of talented writers out there who are going to just totally just step away from this whole adapting video games into movies because the animators for the video games are doing beautiful jobs in the games themselves, like I said before. Cutscenes are getting longer and longer and more detailed, and they look great. And they're called, like, cinematics in the video game. Cinema, wow, what do you know? Because it's like a friggin' movie. And those are just getting more and more detailed. More and more skilled people are coming and creating those. So hopefully it's going to send a message to Hollywood saying, hey, this stuff in the video game is okay enough to project a story to whoever's playing it. I guess they're just trying to reach a broader audience. But who's who? if you're not a fan of the game, what would make you go and see the movie? Chances are, if you played the game, you might see the movie. But if you get a greater story in the game, there's no point in going to the movie, I think. So... All in all, Max Payne, you can skip it for reals. You don't need to see it. If you're a fan of the game, I suggest stick with the game. It's probably a hell of a lot better than the movie. Um, and just... Ugh. So, if anyone out there has... I, I received, for uh, my Dragon Ball video in the comments, I received a good... 15 movies to do, so I might be busy for a while. Um, but if you have a movie that you want to see me review and critique and destroy, uh, leave a comment or video response down there, and I will get to it as soon as possible. So until next time, folks, that is Max Payne, and that is why it sucks.